Hello, everybody, and thanks for joining the OKD working group. In the chat, I put the link to the attendee list. Um, so if you could add your name in there, that would be wonderful while we're waiting for everyone to join us. All right. So I don't see Christian, though I was chatting with him just a few minutes ago. So I um, just wanted to get started on time today, if we could. Um, and respect everybody's time. I believe we've got a few people. Where are those folks? Perfect. Um, all right. Let's just see if I can get to the working group meeting. Um, all right. To kick things off, a little bit of interesting news. Um, we are shifting the OpenShift Commons gathering in Amsterdam on which Christian was going to speak. Um, and we were all going to meet face to face in Amsterdam into a digital conference format rather than a live event uh, thing. And we're moving the date to um, March 27th. So we're going to do the virtual event so it doesn't collide with anything on day zero. Um, and um, doing all of the main stage um, talks that we were planning on doing, but it is now, um, and you can read more about it on the, the OpenShift blog. Um, and if you were planning on coming and bought a ticket, you can get a refund and the virtual one will be a free event. Um, and we'll just make that happen instead and hope everybody stays um, healthy and happy. But um, please do note that KubeCon EU in Amsterdam is still a go. Um, they're still planning on hosting it, um, and there's a link here for um, uh, finding out more details about how they're managing um, their their um, Corolla, their Novel coronavirus updates and their strategy for, for hosting. So I think it's going to be an interesting um, meeting, um, though a lot of folks are starting to um, decide not to come. Um, based on their company's preferences. So that's been sort of top of mind, I know, for a lot of people. Um, we still have um, a room for an OKD working group meeting there. Um, I've booked a room at the Apollo Hotel across the way from the conference center um, for the week to hold working group and SIG meetings. So um, once we're a little closer to the event, um, I'll send around a note and we'll see who's actually coming. And if we can get together at least for a small face-to-face -face, um, at that event. So let me just check here and see if Christian's joined yet. I'm here. Hello, everybody. All Hi right. again. Hi there. So um, yeah, so Christian, um, we're hoping that you on the 27th, at the same time you are on the main stage schedule anyways, um, EU time, can deliver your talk. And we've got, we'll train you up on platform on how to use it and everything. Um, and then there's live Q&A and interaction um, with the platform that- The 27th is, is, is a Friday, right? Yeah. That, yeah, I, so, think, I think that's right. Yeah. So then that would be great if, if other people can join us too, because it's going to be a much more, I think, global and interactive um, audience um, for this. But it will, we're, we're planning on doing it on EU time. So. Um, we can, everybody can chat in the chat and Q&A and ask questions and answer questions. So it's a pretty cool platform called Intrada that I have not used before, but I will be trained on by then. So um, with that in mind, um, we'll go bop back to the meeting planning here. Um, so I figure the next thing to do is to get an update, Christian, from you on um, the timelines for things and um, an update, perhaps, on um, what's going on with OKD at the moment. Hello. Welcome. Hey. Yeah, sure. Uh, so uh, the timeline hasn't really changed. So we're still kind of on track to release the beta by KubeCon, by the time KubeCon starts, hopefully. Um, so in like three weeks, uh, we hopefully have everything uh, done by then. There's still, like the blockers uh, from last time haven't really changed, but we've made some progress um, on on most of them, I, I'd say. And also we've been uh, preparing another 
uh, rebase of the FCOS branches for installer and MCO. And that is currently still blocked by the release of a stable ignition 3.1 uh, specification that we will need uh, for that. Or, well, we want it for, we want to use that. Uh, we don't want to use the experimental one um, just to make things easier and um, more easily migratable uh, as well. The main difference is that, uh, well, between 3.0 and 3.1 is that HTTP headers uh, support was added or will be added. Uh, that's been added into the spec 2.x uh, series already. And now we're just waiting to get that into three as well. Um, yeah, uh, we've been, uh, as I said, uh, working on, on all of the blockers. Um, there is still the Drake cut issue that uh, I know uh, Joseph uh, is waiting is waiting for uh, to get resolved. Um, that is currently blocking the Azure DNS um, from working uh, correctly. We do have one good. I can actually paste the link to that. We we have set up a a Fedora namespace in Google, and apparently Google is giving us credits. Um, or is giving the Fedora community credits to host uh, images. So we will have um, Fedora CoreOS images uploaded to the GCP, the Google um, container platform, very soon. And then the installer should be working there. Uh, yeah. Cool. All right. So, Vadim, do you have anything else to add to the update? Um, just to follow up for the Christian's news about the Google support, um, I verified that GCP is installable. We just need the location once uh, Fedora CoreOS stable is uploaded to the old place. We would be able to test GCP support and officially announce that it's ready. Other platforms still have a small various issues, most notably OpenStack and Olvir need a few changes in MCO to land, and those would be ready to be added. And the problem with the full secret change would be resolved by MCO rebase. So um, we are pretty close. So by pretty close, is that in the next week or two weeks or? Pre coupon or coupon for coupon. So we could we do um, what I'm just trying to think how to make some some noise and publicity about the GCP stuff. Um, could we record a short OpenShift Commons briefing walking through how to deploy on G GCP OKD um, before? We could probably do that. Yeah. Um, I hope that so there is um, especially the Azure issue has been so we we said it's a blocker for 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 beta and um, I know there's people working on that this sprint and also next sprint uh, which should be closing before KubeCon but there isn't really a guarantee that that'll be fixed so um, I would I would even say we will release a beta before KubeCon either way, and then the beta may not include all the platforms, but we will definitely have some of the platforms um, supported there, are, you know, they, they'll they work in the beta, uh, because otherwise, so a sprint is, uh, is three weeks. So the next sprint starts next week, and um, yeah, so they'll have three more weeks uh, to, to get that done, it's one sprint. It's scheduled uh, for the Drake Cut team to work on that. I know that, but um, yeah, I can't really tell uh, whether that's uh, whether they'll they'll finish it in that time. I do hope so, very much. So um, as soon, uh, Vadim, as soon as you're you think you're ready to walk through that one, like deploying on GCP. Um, let me know and I'll we'll find a time and we can just record the video and I can edit it um, into um, an actual commons briefing type style thing um, with some OKD stuff on it. 
is there someone who we should have on that um, recording from the FCOS team who could speak to that side of things? Who would you add from us? Dusty, maybe? Yeah, yeah probably sure, but Dusty. I'm probably Dusty, but I don't really know because we, we probably don't want to um, convolute things with FCOS and well, of course, it's it's using FCOS as a base, but we do, um, you know, configure FCOS in a way that is not standard FCOS. We, um, but well, I'm I'm not sure because the installer will do everything automatically. There won't be any any special like it's FCOS becomes an implementation detail of OKD essentially, like RCOS uh, is an implementation detail of OCP. Um, but sure, I think Dusty May uh, is probably a good person to have in, in that meeting anyway. Just because, one, you know, giving a shout out to Google for giving us, allowing us to host, which is a nice thing to do. And um, But just basically having having a, a, a video that shows it going all the way through deploying on Google. So it's not IBM Cloud, it's not Red Hat's, you know, hosted on AWS. It's something different and new. If we could have that ready and a blog post about it, um, then I can put out for KubeCon. That would be um, awesome. So I will. Um, so Vadim, kind of what I'm kind of need from you is um, as soon as it works, um, all the way through, um, ping me and we'll schedule that recording and we'll work out what you know what the messaging should be as well. Okay. So um, that's the release timeline. Um, we, uh, someone will have to tell me um, pretty quick who they are, um, who Kubeway at Gmail is. Is that someone on this call? Or is it not? Someone from, with this email address asked for access to the Fedora Magazine article draft. They were probably deeply disappointed that there wasn't more there there to, to review and edit. But um, it is was a good reminder for me that I'm going to try and get this out. And I think having the the Google story, um, the GCP st deployment story, would be a good um, good uh, uh, a good thing to to push us on. So um, Neil, look for me to start writing this now that um, I get I'll get some more content in here. But I don't know who the Kubeway person is. Um, I did give them access to it. So anyways, that's the status of the Fedora Magazine article. It's a non-status update. We still haven't gotten anything there. Um, I'm just looking through the open engineering tests. What else should we be covering here? Is there anything around documentation update, Vadim? Yeah, I submitted a pull request for them, and we're in contact with, with Michael from Doc's team. Mm -hmm. um, I will keep on pushing him because um, the changes look pretty trivial. We just need to hide a few sections which don't apply to OKD or Fedora Core OS. Okay. And you... then start yeah. writing them. That, that would be like, I think we counted five sections out of something like 50. So the majority still stays. Can you toss the, um, the pull request that you made um, so that I can track it as well? Sure. that in the blue jeans chat and I'll do that so um, I wanted to if there's nothing else from the on the update side of things you want to open it up for conversation here and how people are, are doing with their testing or if people are have paused on their testing for another release cycle Sounds good to me. Well I mean, I'm getting close to uh, to getting to a position where I can start doing maybe some open stack based testing um, that might be happening in the next couple of weeks not exactly sure yet but that is that is the plan to do that uh soon uh but i haven't gotten to it yet sounds like the same status as my um fedora magazine article so um we'll get pretty close 
going to watch this one. All right. Anyone else? Vadim and I have been working yeah. together with the bare metal team uh, the past few days to resolve one one of the last, oh, probably the last outstanding issue for uh, OpenShift and bare metal, uh, which is they ship a script, uh, which is a Python script in the MCO, and we can't run that on on FCOS because we don't ship Python in FCOS. And they're gonna they're gonna actually translate that to Go. And yeah, yeah. So that's the bad yeah. news. The bad news is that it's also a blocker for OpenStack and Ovir deploys because these are using the scripts, but it's um, we're pushing at them, and hopefully a proper rebase would be merged in Fcos branch of MCO soon, because we can we can do the bypassing the OCP uh, process. Um, I also found out that um, CentOS CoreOS kind of works. Uh, thanks, huge thanks to James Castle who built a lot of RPMs. We assembled the image for CentOS uh, CoreOS and managed to make Fedora CoreOS update to CentOS CoreOS as a part of OKD cluster. Uh, the installation didn't proceed because of, uh, uh, I think Multus doesn't know which binaries to use for, for CentOS CoreOS, but that's a minor thing. And the bulk of the job to actually make instances boot and make instances upgrade from one operating system to the other has been fixed. So um, we'll take it from here. Just looking through the other ones. So yeah, that's a lot of the blocker there. Um, we did have a discussion last time around Minikube. Um, not that it um, it. We had a talk with uh, Code Ready Containers people. Um, they want to use OKD as a basis for them. However, uh, because of a few changes in 4.4, they cannot use it. Uh, they cannot use a single master deployment just yet. It needs a few fixes. But once they would be able to use OCP as a basis, we will um, ask them to evaluate OKD and um, perhaps official CRC would be using OKD as well. Awesome. Oh, so there just won't be a CRC based on OCP anymore. That's an I'm option. Okay. We, haven't, we haven't discussed that far, but they are interested to stay as close uh to community as possible i'm okay with that idea entirely <laughs> so it'd be post 4.4 so when we get to four, the 4.5 release they would be able to to use okd is that basically the assessment if they had resources to do it um probably maybe the fixes will land in 4.4 um it's still in well, things during the year. Okay. I'm just going to say working towards using MKD around 4.4 release. That's as vague as I can be. I'm going to change this from mini OKD to Slash DRC using OKD and save the notes so next time I know. So, are there any other updates um, out there on the um, in the chat from folks? James is always. I think you don't have a microphone. Um, Pausing here and reading the, um, the chatter here. Um, 
James Castle is saying it should be easy to fake FCOS etcd Red Hat release to work with the Multis issue with CentOS until the underlying issue is fixed. It's currently listed as a hack to get it working on FCOS already. Neil saying it's using etsy OS release, not Red Hat release. Vadim is suggesting we can just fork Multis repo. And someone is asking that one. What is, is Multis? What is Multis? So now that we get down to the real meat, um, how about someone explains what Multis is for Philip? Um, Multis is a container networking interface implementation. Um, basically, it's the low-level CNI we use. And on top of it, we run either OVN or OpenShift SDN. The bonus for that is that Multis can run multiple <laughs> implementations of various CNI. So you can have two or three CNI plugins running in your cluster and just they're taking care of different things. That's the basis how we can um, use hardware implementations and, uh, for instance, OVM. Uh, it's just a matter of placing, of, of teaching it which binaries for o OVN or OpenShift SDN to place. And uh, it's really a terrible hack on their side. So we should either quickly fork it or make them do the right thing and detect the operating system in a better way so that CentOS or OS would be supported as well. So I noticed that, um, I'm going to say your name wrong, Friak, you're here from Proton. I'm wondering um, what your plans are for um, possibly deploying OKD over there at um, Proton and if you've been doing any testing. Yeah, that's the way we tested CentOS CoreOS. We started with a proper Fedora CoreOS image, but uh, the update, which is included in our release image, was in fact uh, CentOS CoreOS RPMs and OS3 commit. And it worked until the point of Multis, but um, once we have all things in place, we will know which repos should be updated and we can contemplate a plan. Meanwhile, um, CentOS folks could work on making this whole system official so that we would know if it's feasible or things. There is some, some problem with architecture which won't let it happen, but I don't think it's I don't see any issues with making a CentOS CoreOS at all and make OKD run on top of it. We're all in agreement with that. Um, so I, I've been, Freark, I'm sort of chatting with Freark from Proton on um, in chat here. Um, are, are you guys running um, Proton on CentOS? What I think I remember. Sure. And unmute yourself if you like. That's a huge marker. There you go. Um, we're uh, running both CentOS and RHEL. We're doing both Enterprise and OKD, but we're pretty much still stuck in the 3.11 uh, for the moment due to time constraints. Okay. So once we, we have a beta or a GA, will you be trying to test the um, on a small cluster? I will be trying to do that, yes. I'm not sure if we're going in that direction with the company, but I will definitely. Okay. Well, good to know. And welcome. Nice to have you here. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we also have some maybe talk to us on the side as well about um, migrating from 3.11 to 4. Um, there are some helper tools out there as well. But anyone else on the, the call um, want to talk about where they're at with their testing? I think most of it is um, 
we're still awaiting a few blockers to get the open stack and overt and bare metals almost there. Not Vadim and um, Christian, do you have anything else that you want to ask of people? Um, our demo on KubeCon EU has been accepted. So me and Christian would be on Red Hat's booth on KubeCon EU. Mm -hmm. And we'll be showing how to make your own OKD based release. Yeah. Um, basically yeah. what release payloads are, how do we test it, which things are easy to modify, which are more complex, and so on and so forth. Uh, so if you have ideas um what to show we're open for for suggestions i guess we have a small plan which things to show but if you have some more please shout it out so um i would like to record that as a briefing prior to kubecon um just so that we have it um captured and so let's let's Along with the the Google one, let's um, also record that once we figure out what it is, what that is going to look like. Um, so let's let's get both of those things recorded in the as soon as and it doesn't have to be super professional or anything because it's on the community side. But um, have, capturing that will allow me to have some content to um, use during the week of KubeCon to promote OKD. So. There's one other, um, Joseph is um, giving a quick update here in chat on vSphere. I don't know if you want to unmute yourself. I'll read what you've written. That vSphere looks good with a few issues on corporate proxy, but it should be addressed by the next rebase. So that's good news. Um, and also someone is asking, uh, Joseph again, if we're building our own OKD, are we doing it with all of the images all the images for all of the operators. I'm reading these out loud. It's going to be the same installation profile as the default, because right now we don't have a way to um, to sort of disable uh, operators and not install them. So it's either everything or nothing, and we'll we'll do everything. So in the in the chat, there's a a little bit of a conversation that there's about a, a hundred plus images to do the build. I, I, yeah, I, I'm, we're not rebuilding all of them, but we're we're definitely taking them all for for the install. I would say, Vadim, or did you have something else in mind? Oh, that's correct. That's just not efficient to rebuild everything from scratch, so that you would have the very same result. Uh, it's also pointless from the release from the license. Uh, point of view because you can use UBI 7, uh, which is a basis for all of our images everywhere. It's not like in 3x days where you had to use CentOS base instead of the RHEL 7 base. Um, what we will be showing, uh, Christian is correct. We would be slowly replacing our release image one image by one, showing uh, the difference, uh, showing how you can upgrade from your own custom system to your other custom system. And what do those images mean, where to look for source, and uh, how to play with them? It's essentially also useful for development if you want to test um, your own change. And, you know, uh, for example, let's say any, any operator you have, you have um, made a change in, uh, you, you will build that image and create a new release payload with your custom changed image in it and then you can upgrade to that um, that's essentially also how we test things um, in, in OCP and OKD so um, yeah creating your own release payload from customized uh, images but not all of them have to be customized it, it's you can replace as many as you want uh, usually you, you'll just replace one at a time to uh, you know, to to clearly see uh, the the failure and have a place to look for, uh, but you can definitely also replace more than just one.
Are there any other questions in the chat? This may be our shortest meeting yet, which is not a bad thing. So again, KubeCon is still a go, so we'll all be there. Um, and I will send around a note to see who is coming um, and find a time that works for all of us to have a face-to-face -face meeting there. And um, then we can get together there. And as well, there'll be people in the booth at certain times, and I'll let everybody know what those times are you guys get assigned. Um, and if anybody has other um, content that they want shared out around OKD, maybe um, that's a good push to get the Fedora article um, up and out so that we have all of that around KubeCon. Um, but we also have OpenStack, not OpenStack, um, Red Hat Summit coming up in April as well. So that's it. And um, I don't know when the next flock is, but um, we should have a presence at that. So, so my, I have a large group of people coming with me to Red Hat Summit this year. So, and we're all going to be at the OpenShift, uh, the OpenShift Commons gathering. So there's that. Um, and uh, Flock is uh, this August 6th through 9th in Detroit. So oh, Detroit, okay. So I don't know if the CFP has opened up yet for Flock, but if it hasn't, if it has, then it probably, no, it hasn't opened yet. But when it does, it probably be a good idea to like get some proposals in for OKD stuff. Yeah. So we will uh, definitely do that from the from the Red Hat side, um, from my side, and Vadim, probably we we can do that together again as well, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah, but yeah, we'll definitely do that from our side, and everybody else, and is definitely also welcome to submit things. And by then, hopefully, there is um, there is a a stable version out. Oh yeah, there better be one by then. Let me just tell you. Yeah, they're really. It, it, it's got to be existing by that point. Otherwise, this will be just a miserable set of you know down expectations. Yeah, we'll get there. It's just um. So um, the ignition three point one. We should be tracking that as well. I was going to add that link in the notes. Multis. All good. So I think, folks, that is all we have for today. Um, unless someone has something else that they want to do. So the oh, next. Yeah, Say that again. DevConf US is, is this September in, in Framingham, Massachusetts. Oh, that's right. That's right. And the yeah. CFP. Yeah, opened thanks, up. Michael. And the CFP opened up, so somebody should start proposing. Yeah. Anybody on this call live near Framingham? And that's an is I don't that know where that is. <laughs> it's 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 just outside of Boston, Mass. Um, oh, what, okay. What month was it again, Neil? September. Late September. I'm I'm going to say Boston, area, Mass, area. Yeah, those are all things that we should do. So I will endeavor to put a little bit more detail around all of these um, and hit the mailing list and remind people to, to do, submit. It's even better if it's from external folks at um, DevConf and Flock. Um, I'm happy to help push you, write abstracts with you and get those in. If you're feeling the love for going to any of those places um, and have the travel budget. That will be great. All right. I am going to turn the record button off unless people have other things to say. Going once, going two.